Welcome to this episode of Caillou Talks. I am Kai Ninja, and I am super pumped to get this podcast started. Let's cut to the chase. Today we're going to talk about the art of finding your voice. This can mean lots of things to a lot of people. Finding your voice can be something simple, like speaking up in a class about a subject you know about, or finding your voice. That can be something bigger, like talking to a large group of people about something you're passionate about. I know a little something about that part. I have to speak in front of a large group of people, including the Connecticut State Capitol, if you watch my video, about awesome awareness and acceptance. It was scary, I can admit, but I was able to find my voice and make an impact. And for some people, finding your voice is literally that, developing the ability to speak. This should be celebrated in a very big way. Cami Granado once said, Finding your voice is about having the confidence to know better, so you can use your voice. I get this quote, and I love how it connects confidence to finding your voice. Easier said than done, am I right? And when you find your voice, you can use that voice to talk about the things that are important to you. All right, let's meet our two guests today. That's right, not one, but two guests. First, Chase Taylor is a talented 24-year-old author and illustrator. He's the creative mind behind the Letter Critters book series. Chase is on the autism spectrum. It is dedicated to helping kids learn the alphabet and conquer challenging words. He's also a passionate advocate for autism awareness and has raised an impressive $900,000 for Autism Speaks for various events. That's almost a million dollars, people. Can someone give us some praise for that? He's been a Special Olympics athlete for over 11 years and is a member of the National Honor Society. Currently, Chase is pursuing a career in graphic arts and has landed a graphic design internship at Barker's Animation. Next up, Helen Taylor, she's Chase's mom, has co-founded the Western Connecticut Autism Speaks Walk. She's also organized a successful all-day event called Free Autism Education and Awareness. Helen is a dedicated volunteer, certified trainer for the state of Connecticut, and she has educated police officers all over the state about autism safety and autism awareness. Another major thing that Mrs. Taylor has done with her son, Chase, is to develop the Social Chase. The Social Chase is a program founded by Helen in 2018. It aims to support late teens and young adults on the autism spectrum, as well as those with needs who live in an underserved communities. The program caters about toward 10 to 20 neurodivergent and racially diverse individuals that age 13 to 35. Well, my guests are two individuals that certainly found their voice. Let's get to know them better. Chase, Mrs. Taylor, it's so great to have you here. Thank, thank you, you for, for making all the trip to 84 to Danbury. Yes, thank you very much for having us. My first question will be a joint question for both of you. Tell me your stories. What first do Chase? Okay, well, when I was uh, young, I used to be quiet and non-social. And I just like to keep to myself and like draw certain things over and over again and watch lots of cartoons over and over again. And my parents like uh, diagnosed me at the age of three for a doctor's appointment when they found that they might think something's wrong with me. So Not wrong. Well, something's not. Uh, in- that then something's different about me. Like uh and they found out that I had autism and they were a little worried but they tried to like make me uh make me safe and protected as possible. So a few years later they uh developed a certain walk like for autism and lots of people who are on the autism autism spectrum like me and they just wanted to support me that and I felt pretty uh, good about it too and in school I used to like uh, draw a lot and have a lot of behavioral therapists help me out with my uh, future and to teach me certain things in the isolated location and they did a pretty good job with that and they're very nice to me and they helped me like have some uh, social conversations with some other peers and over the years, I got some friends, and I got some creative ideas, like uh, making my own characters and books, and just uh, contacting some people, like uh, for certain events. And also, I um, what else? I can talk about your characters. Oh yeah, 
Also, I developed these uh, characters called the Ledger Critters back in 2016. And they were drawn on my computer from a computer software called Archrage. And I was able to, like, uh, um, color them in and just uh, save them on the computer. And when my mom saw them, she thought it would be fun to do a book out of them. And so I took her advice, and I used the Kindle software to make it into a book. And then I put it on Amazon and published it to the audience. And I got some very good reviews on it. And afterwards, I got some more ideas with these characters, like uh, making more books and then doing a stuffed toy line and also a future cartoon someday. So what are your books about, Chase? So my books are about the uh, alphabet and how they make sounds and words. And What are the titles of your books? I, so the, the, there's the uh, Letter Critters, the Letter Critters Biographies, the Letter Critters Town Show, and the Letter Critters Word, word Book. I still plan on making some books in the future, possibly an activity book. And I also want to like make some like interactive games like on my uh, website. I'm still actually working on it in, as of now. And hopefully it will be successful. And also I like to like uh, share my art with the world and my... Uh, closest friends and fans. And I got some good fan art from them as well. And also I have a pre-planned, uh, pre-planned, uh, uh, I have a pre, pre-planned, uh, uh, strategy of making it into a cartoon and I already have my, uh, ideas plotted out. Hopefully it'll be successful and be a way, uh, plan to have in the future. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> now let's do let's do Mrs. Taylor now. So our journey as Chase stated, um he was diagnosed around three and a half years old and thankfully for a teacher um, after birthday three he went into a special ed program at, at the Box Hill Annex and we saw that his Behaviors were a little bit changing and, you know, you know, things he was declining. And we were talking to the teacher that we thought he was copying other people who had intellectual disabilities, some of their behaviors, because sometimes people on a spectrum tend to do that. And she had pulled us aside and she told us, see if he's diagnosed, get him diagnosed with autism if he has it. If he does, you have to get into Dr. Galloway's program it's very limited. It's very hard to get into it, but she says, go right away. And so we didn't know anything about autism. So we went to the neurologist, you know, the questions, and he was diagnosed at the time was well, high on the spectrum. And the doctor said, you know, do you want to give him medication? We're like, no, we, we got to figure this out first. <laughs> and then, you know, I looked at my husband and I said, so, you know, what are we going to do? He said, we're just going to take care of our son. And that's that start of our journey of just taking care of him and, and trying to get him prepared for the world and the world to get prepared for him and accept him for who he is. And we went on a mission. I did a lot of research. Um, I used to go to New York all the way to Terrytown because I didn't know anything. I went to some of the mothers. They're talking about there. some of them had auction tanks and all those things because, you know, they had more money than I had. I was like, I can't have an auction tank and I don't think I'll put my kid in there. But I learned so much from them, and we st- we heard about Autism Speaks, and we started getting involved. We had a team, um, Chase and Friends, and we didn't name it Chase. We called it Chase and Friends because it was never just about him. We're always inclusive of others because we know he's not by himself. And we had one of the largest teams, and we were going to Hartford. We're from Waterbury, and we knew people from Waterbury weren't going to Hartford, so we're missing a lot of people who aren't getting the information. So we talked to Autism Speaks. We had him come to Waterbury. And we even questioned from someone from a different town saying, why Waterbury? And I said, well, why not? Um, and we've had a very successful walk for, you know, for 10 years. Um, we, our walk is very community oriented. It wasn't just a walk. It was community oriented. We have people on stage. Even Autism Speaks National came to look at our walk because they liked what, the way we we're doing it. And they're trying to share with other walks. Because we're passionate about the, the community. And from there, like, you know, we raised over a million dollars now. Um, but it's just, 
us giving back our time and, and we care about what's going on. And so even I became a big advocate, became ambassador with Autism Speaks and went down to D.C. to get the Autism Cares Act passed on my friend Christine Faressa and some other times with the legislation. So I'm saying this because, you know, I'm a mom and us moms and dads can do anything that's a little bit to make a difference in the world and to help people to learn about our individuals on the spectrum and to support them and to ex- and give them jobs. <laughs> um, they can work in the little nuances. And from there with Chase, you know, with the school system, I told him from um, third grade, I said, your goal is to get him to college. And they thought I was a little bit nuts. And I said, well, that's your goal to get him to college because I didn't want them to dumb down his curriculum. I thought it was important for him to become challenged and he became challenged and he always had a one-on-one with him because he didn't, he had behaviors earlier in the years. Um, he did ABA therapy and now he's an introvert. They're told, obviously he's quite an introverted. Um, but um, from there, I just lost my train of thought, but I was okay, I'll get it back. Um, so with the school system, I was constantly advocating for him as well as others. We were going to PPT meetings, and I said, this is not just for Chase. This is for others. They're like, Miss Taylor, just focus on your son. I was like, no, I'm not focusing on my son because every mother's not like me in the school system, and their child doesn't have a mom like me. And so, no, I'm speaking for all the children in here who are on the spectrum because it's not just about Chase because he has us, my husband and I. Some parents don't have, the kids don't have that. And so... Long story short, we did a lot of battling, um, and Chase worked very hard, very hard during those times, and he's very susceptible of my challenges, which I know it wasn't always easy for him, but he ended up graduating from Central Connecticut State University, cum laude, um, in December when they thought it wasn't possible. He ended up doing it independently, even though he had a one-on-one throughout his whole life, and that was always a concern for us, him having the one-on-one, relying on somebody. And so we had, well, it's your job to make sure he doesn't need a one-on-one. So it's your job to make sure he doesn't need it. Until you get to that point, he's going to have a one-on-one. And so he does not have a one-on-one now. And he graduated. And he's been doing some internships. And it's just, you know, just to tell parents, we have to do our own due diligence you go to BRS, Bureau of Rehabilitation Services, to get you know training on work. You don't always have to take what they say. As a parent, find what your child's niche is, find out who they are, and you go find places that they can work. And then you have the conversations with the person to see what happens. And so just like, you know, Caillou, like your mom, she found your niche, which is talking, which you do a great job. Chase's niche is to draw and he's working very hard on his game, and he does want to be have his cartoon care become a cartoon character series to educate other individuals. And some people they'll say about his characters like, "Oh, it's a it's a book for autism." Like, no, he's has autism, who happens to draw characters. <laughs> so it's not his characters don't have anything to do with autism. It has the personalities that he's interested in. Yes, so. It's just we have to advocate for our children, do our own due diligence, and seek help. There's a lot of help out there. There's a lot of mom parent groups. I can't I can't keep saying mom because my husband was very much involved. Um, parents parent groups um, out there. So seek help, get the information you need, and to help your child survive this world, and help others to accept who your child is. That's my journey. That's my passion. So the the letter critters, that was very interesting. I am I that really caught my eye. That t shirt. Did you make that yourself? Well, did you design the t shirt? Well, I did make some t shirts, but I think mom made this one. That's pretty beautiful. Yeah. Did you make Wait, that too? So yeah, it. Chase created so he made the t shirt. I just got it print I ordered it. So there's a difference. So this is I took your images that you created and I put it on a shirt. Yeah. So he actually created it. And then on his website, he has merchandise, like you have merchandise. And you could change um, the character. So I created where it says mom. So you could take, you could take, you could even make, put your name on it. 
and create your own shirt with the characters. C-A-I-L Caillou. Mm -hmm. Yep, so you could do that as well. So he has a merchandise store and and Letter Critters, um, which he, you could make shirts and, you know, different, all different merchandises on there, like cups like yours and mugs. Tell me more about these characters and y'all. Tell me their names, what what they are. Okay, well, there are three different species of each character. There is bears, um, fennec foxes, and squirrels. But also panda bears and polar bears. But you got the idea. Anyway, it's, uh, they all have uh, red letters on their bodies and also lowercase letters on their backs. So they could tell uh, from... To de- de- so that they could tell two, there are two types of letters for each one. And each one has a personality that uh, it begins with the same letter as the one on their body. For example... P likes popcorn and pizza. So their names are just their names are just letters of the alphabet, but I do give them real names. But uh, they did, I just like to call them like like letter critter blank or something like that. Like letter critter what? Like like a uh, letter critter A for example. What's letter critter A's name? Abby. Abby. Her name's Abby. So that's very nice. How you created that? Mm-hmm. Now tell me more about this social chase. I want to learn more about it. Thank you for asking, Caillou. So the social chase, I started because as they were teenagers and there there wasn't a lot of opportunities for social activities for them. In our area, I I worked in Hartford. I would have to come all the way back to Waterbury, pick him up. I'm like, well, I'm going to bring him. I'll bring some of his friends and then travel to New Haven and then or or travel to Wallingford or travel to Plainville, and it was getting so much for me. It was so much traveling on a work day. And again, and again. On a work day, yeah, again, it was a lot. Nomads and, and, on the move. Yes, yes. You were on the move. <laughs> on the move. And it was getting a little bit tiring, and I knew a lot of his friends should also be participants of this. So I said, well, let me just start something here in Waterbury. So one of the first things I did was we're going to have a game night and it's going to be no technology, just board games. I know. But Caillou, as you see that face, <laughs> how was it, Chase? It was good. It was yeah. fun. So I co- even a cell phone? I, no cell phone. They, we, not even the flip phone? Not even the flip phone. <laughs> so we, collabor- <laughs> yeah, we collaborated with Post University, and we had board night um, during the week, and the athletes would volunteer. And at the point where they loved us so much, they were fighting of who was going to volunteer to play with our with our um, social chasers. I call oh, them. I call them. Some, uh, yeah, energy competition. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sounds like a very yeah. fun experience. They had a blast. We played Uno, apples to apples, bingo. Uno. You hear that, mom? Yeah, they Uno. Uh, yeah, a lot of games. So that she, was she's such very a good at Uno. She's very good. At Uno. Good. So am I. So we might have to have to play a game. <laughs> hey, and, mom, did you bring that travel size Uno in my bag? <laughs> No, no. Oh, I, had, I had just like this little. This is like these cute, the teeny ones, the teeny. <laughs> they're so cute. Yeah. You, me, yeah. Chase, and Mom will have a little, little Uno yeah. duel anytime. Yeah, anytime. anytime. Or maybe we should go to a social mm-hmm. chase event. Or yeah. Oh yeah, maybe that. Maybe that. Yeah. Great idea. Yeah. Let's do that. So um, after that, we I started looking at other activities such as cooking classes, um, going to Brass City Raceway, doing a race car. So. I would contact these different organizations and stating, you know, our individuals are on a spectrum. Um, we have to approach things a certain way. And the cooking classes were wonderful. Art of Yum restaurant was amazing. They never dealt with people on a spectrum, and I had to teach them a couple of things. But the kids loved it. I had an individual who were going to make the hamburgers the first time, right? I don't eat hamburgers. I'm like, okay. you don't. I know. He said, I don't eat hamburgers. I'm like, okay. Well, you don't, you, you don't you eat yeah, you can make it anyways because you're learning how to cook. And guess what, Caillou? They ate the hamburger. I know. They ate I the hamburger. I never thought in my life I would <laughs> wear the friend and never eat hamburgers. Yes. No, not Helen. Not one of the social chasers. Yeah. No! <laughs> no, it's worse! <laughs> <laughs> I never find the light that was it was possible yeah. for humanity to not eat hamburgers. Yes. They're literally having with buns. Don't forget about vegetarians. Oh, 
<laughs> That's even more. Okay, I, how how can you not say no? To, how could you say no to that? But he ate. He ate the hamburger. So it's all about exposure. Please tell me he at least he tried. ate. It. No, he ate it. Did he like it? He did. Yeah. Because final. you know why, Caillou? Because he made it himself. So what the social taste? What we do is we not only we give them opportunities to try different things. It also exposes them to different Very nice things. Ex- nice experiment. Nice ex- Helen, Jason's mom. I'm a scientist. <laughs> yeah. I do experiments <laughs> by <laughs> making kids eat food they don't like, yeah. but they make themselves, so they like it. Yeah. Because uh, humans and pride. Brains, human and their pride. And brains, right? brains. Humanity and their pride. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Yeah. So it's about exposing and, and, the, and giving them experiences because some, um, like, People used to tell me growing up, oh, like my son doesn't want to play baseball. So, and he's a kid. I'm like, so you're giving him a choice? And I never gave Chase a choice at first. It's like, you have to try it first. And then you have the choice. That to, reminds me. Then you have the choice to do it or not do it. And so most of the time he enjoyed doing it. But even with my older son, who's not on the spectrum, same thing. Oh, I didn't want to go to band camp. I'm like, <laughs> you're going to go. If you don't like it, I'll come and get you. And he went, and he liked it, and he stayed. So my thing has always been, what I always tell you, you're going to make an educated dis- decision. That's just, that reminds me of the time I, like, I did not like any sports whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Like, whenever mom, when I didn't like any sports, yes. I say, Mom, I hate football. I hate ba- I hate baseball. Mm-hmm. I don't like basketball. Mm-hmm. You say, and your mom says, Why? You had to try it. You tried all those sports. See? Right? I tried them all. Like one time I played and basketball. Now here we are. One time I played basketball. Huh. And the ball like, oh! Oh, it got oh. you. <laughs> I was like, I'm never trying basketball again. Okay, football. I got tackled. <laughs> <laughs> baseball. Didn't even try it. No, you did. Baseball, yeah. Oh, yeah, baseball. Remember. First strike. Ball accidentally hit my face. Did it? Oh. I remember, I remember like an accident like that happening. Or was it that, basketball? No, it was true. Okay. You, you, you had, like, you duh, 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 duh. I felt like, ayo, ayo. I, I got hit with balls. I got hit. I did, I did too. I, this one time, right the baseball head. hit me in the balls. It got, hit me, a ball, a ball hit me in the balls. In the balls. Okay. Oh, wow. Ouchie, ouchie. Yeah. So I'm going to give you some more examples of experiences. So just recently, um, thanks to a grant from Nest and the Social Equity Council, I took nine um, young adults, social chasers, to an overnight retreat at the Madison Beach. Ooh, it was a ten, it was a ten room it was a ten room house, and it was with the life coach Don Pollins, and the and the parents entrusted me with, with their, their I children. I heard that their sand is very good for sensory kids. Mm. Yeah, they walked on the beach, and and what they had to do had sessions of conversation, and I wasn't there for it, so they could. Speak freely did with each other. Castles? No, it was kind of chilly. But they went walking and they played a game. Well, they, they, you they, go they to a beach, you didn't make sandcastles. It was cold. It was the a, first place I heard some kids that doesn't like a kid that doesn't like hamburgers. And now I hear that you go to the beach and you didn't make sandcastles. Now I heard it all. I heard it all. See, that's what I heard it all. That's what we're here Mom, for. Check it off my bucket list. Yeah, there you go. I heard, <laughs> I heard it all. Look at her. She's like this. She's like this. <laughs> I created a monster. I literally created a monster for some. You brought this on yourself when you gave birth to me, Mom. You, you should know that. Mother. It's not about me. It's not about you. Do you, do mother. Like every time that art, that, I would just tell you the same thing about mother. It's like every time that they see their child, their children embarrassing them, they're yeah. like, I created a monster. <laughs> they're like this. This is what Mom does every time I embarrass her. Like this. Do you do that sometimes? Do you, that sometimes? Do you like embarrass? Do you embarrass your mom? No, your no. mother sometimes so no. much that your mother does this. Well, maybe once or twice. Did you? Have you? I don't, I don't know. Maybe. Not really. Don't Chase is like the total opposite of you. You're like on a different sides. He's like, see how relaxed and chill he is. He's like total opposite. What so. About, what about me? I'm chill. No, you're not no, chill. You're I'm not chill. I'm you're chill. not chill. Oh, you cool. I'm yeah. sure, but ch- no. you, you could be cool, but you're not chill. Yeah, you're not. You're very, you're very <laughs> energetic. Energetic. You're very energetic. Your high sensory input. Yes. Of, 
very which is nice which I enjoy, very much. which I do enjoy. But then again, I'm not with you every day. And also, to <laughs> anyone who said to me that Dabby is outrated in watching this, well, guess what? I don't care that Dabby's outrated. Get wrecked. There you go. <laughs> that social chase thing, the retreat. Yeah. Everything you've done, I believe that's very beautiful. Thank you. And I'd love to like do that with you. I love to join social chase. And as soon as you hit 13, you're it in. It sounds like a very great and wonderful experience. And I'm very happy that mm. there are some people out there mm. that have the hearts, that have the determination and love for people that are yep. artistic yep. and people that have disabilities yep. and the people that are different. The determination and like devotion and love and appreciation to do something as big as this. That that, that really brings my heart. Thank that really you. brings my heart. That's why I love, that's why I love to see in the show. People that have the heart and dedication to really go above and beyond for their passion. That's why I love to see in this show. That's yeah. why I make this show. Thank you. To share the people's stories that, that, that are so passionate, mm. so in love with their voice, that they will go above and beyond. That's what Kai Talks was about. To share other people their stories and let other people get inspired and, and soon reach the entire world one episode at a time. Well, that's that's actually all for the interview. I said that was a very good interview. That was by far the most, I, I'm going to say, top to bottom, no bets. Like, hands down, the most passionate interview I have ever seen. Oh, you thank you. You two are amazing. Thank you. You're amazing, you too. You deserve your gifts. <laughs> you deserve your gifts. <laughs> Yes, Thank you. only limited edition Caillou Talks mug with my face on it. I love it. So, Caillou, I want to say to you that I was very proud of you when you were at the Capitol. You did an amazing job. I really, I really appreciate it, guys. Today, I was honored to have two amazing and inspirational guests on my show. Helen Taylor and her son Chase embodied the quote of Cami Granado. Finding your voice is about having the confidence to know you matter so that you can use your voice. I have looked up to them for a long time, and I won't forget the day that Chase gave me one of his books at the state capitol or had me on his show. So what I'm taking away is this. When you believe that you matter, you have something to offer the world, and that's what makes you different may not just be a challenge, but a way for you to inspire others. You can use your voice to change your community, your city, and with a lot of time, even the world. And that's the goal of this podcast. Caillou Talks. On Caillou Talks, I interview people who inspire others to find their own passions and voices. Helen and Chase Taylor have that for me and my family, and I hope that they do that for you too. Just look at these two amazing guests we had for us today. Helen and Chase Taylor have absolutely found their confidence to use their voice. And they have used their voices in so many ways. Writing books, hosting TV shows, gathering people together at educational forums, speaking at events, and so much more. And I believe there's going to be more to come in the future. That's what this show is all about, people. Learning from others, discovering your passion, finding your voice, and telling the world about it. That's it for now. Thank you for joining me, Caillou Ninja, on Caillou Talks. Be sure to visit the website so you can buy yourself some Caillou Talks merch. Bye. See you later. <laughs>